Good evening, and welcome back to uh, Hellhounds Late Night Metal Show <laughs> here on the Horror and Metal Channel. I'm Hellhound, obviously, and uh, in my last video we looked at uh, all my favorite uh, metal guitarists, and so I figured for this video, uh, let's look at my uh, 10 favorite metal vocalists with uh, some honorable mentions uh, thrown in as well. So really, there's going to be 20 um, that I list here, you know, uh, 10 in the main list and 10 honorable mentions. So, um, yeah, there's a lot to choose from. This is a little easier for me to narrow it down than my uh, favorite uh, metal guitarist list, but, um, but yeah, because there's still a whole lot of great ones to pick from. So let's go and get started. All right, uh, number 10, my 10th favorite metal vocalist, it's going to be none other than Joey Belladonna from Anthrax. Uh, oh, and like with my guitarist video, I am going to show my favorite album that they performed on. And if they were in uh, multiple bands, I'll show my favorite album from each band they were in. Um, so, yeah, my favorite uh, release that he sang on by Anthrax is the second album. And the first to feature his uh, powerful pipes is uh, Spreading the Disease. Yeah, great album. And I think it's uh, very likely uh, Joey's best uh, vocal performance um, and, uh, yeah, a lot of great songs like AIR, Lone Justice, Madhouse, which is, you know, um, a radio favorite, uh, The Enemy, which is probably my favorite, uh, song on the album, uh, yeah, Armed and Dangerous, Medusa, so many great songs, uh, Scott Ian and company really, uh, did, did really good with this album, and, uh, it's a, a perfect example of why Joey's such a great vocalist, and he's actually my favorite thrash metal vocalist, uh, by far, um, and he came from a different background, sort of a classic rock, uh, background with, you know, bands like Journey and Rush and Foreigner, and so, uh, he was very new to metal, especially thrash metal at the time, uh, but I think that makes him very unique, it's, you know, thrash metal with, like, really clean vocals, and, uh, by the way, this list is only gonna be clean vocalists, so some of the more harsh vocalists from, uh, extreme metal bands is gonna be, maybe that'll be a future list someday, this is only gonna be my favorite, uh, clean singers in metal. And, uh, yeah, Joey Belladonna from Anthrax is my 10th favorite. Really glad he's back in the band. I saw them in concert uh, a few years ago, and it was awesome. They put on a hell of a show, and uh, Joey's, uh, those, he can still hit those high notes, and he has kind of a lower register now, and it just, it just sounds amazing. Um, yeah, great, great singer. Uh, very underrated, I should say. Um, all right, number nine is going to be uh, Tim... Uh, Ripper Owens, who's been in multiple bands. Uh, he's been in so many bands. He's an amazing singer. Um, yeah, sadly, he did. He joined a, a few bands where um, he was replaced by the uh, the former singer that was that preceded him. Um, but anyway, he sang for Judas Priest. My favorite album he did of the band is Jugulator. Uh, this was one of the heaviest things Priest had done up to that point. You know, um, this came yeah this came after Painkiller, which is the ra last album with Halford before yeah, he eventually returned. Of course, I saw him in concert earlier this year. It was awesome. But anyway, um, yeah, Tim Owens sang on this album. It's really underrated. It's a great album. The first time I ever heard it, uh, a song from this was in the Bride of Chucky soundtrack. The song Bloodstain, which is a great song. Um, yeah, Tim Owens can hit those high notes. Uh, he's he. Uh, Rob Halford was a huge influence on him, and, you know, singing for one of his favorite bands was like a dream come true. He had previously sang in a Judas Priest tribute band, British Steel, I want to say was the name of it, but I could be wrong, so don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah, it's a great album, very, very heavy, uh, he has a great metal voice, and he's very underrated. Um, of course, when it comes to Judas Priest, I definitely prefer Rob Halford singing for them, obviously, uh, but Tim Owens was, is really good in his own right. He was also in, uh, like I said, several other bands, but also Iced Earth, and pr he was only in two Iced Earth albums, The Glorious Burden and, uh, this one, Framing Armageddon, um, Something Wicked Part 1, and this isn't my favorite um, Iced Earth album, but it is a good, he, he, he really excels on it, his voice is just great, he's an amazing singer, like I said, and, um, when it comes to his time in, uh, both Priest and Iced Earth, I think these are my favorite albums from each respective band, like I said, he was in several other albums as well, he sang for Yngwie Malmsteen for a while, he was in, uh, Charred Walls of the Damned, and, uh, just several others, I'll be here all day if I list them all, he's had a lot of projects, but, uh, but yeah, I did really enjoy his tenure in Priest and Iced Earth, but I am overall glad that they that he was that Rob Halford came back and uh, Mark, Matt Barlow came back for for a while. Um, but yeah, Tim Ripper Owens, my ninth favorite metal vocalist. He's great. All right, number eight is going to be none other than Tony Martin, who sang for Black Sabbath uh, for a while, and he's actually been he's the 
Uh, he's been in the band the second longest out of any of the vocalists, uh, next to Ozzy, of course. And uh, he's very underrated, too. And people come, when it comes to Black Sabbath, most people only think about Ozzy and, and Dio. And uh, well, those are two, my two favorite eras. Um, I think that, yeah, Tony, the Tony Martin era is really uh, over, overlooked. And my favorite album he sang on was the first one that he sang on with them, The Eternal Idol. Um, awesome songs like the opener, The Shining, yeah, rise up to the shining. Awesome song. Uh, Ancient Warrior, Hard Life to Love, uh, yeah, Born to Lose, Nightmare, killer stuff. Um, he was on, I want to say, five albums with them, five or six, and they're all really, really good. Uh, most people hate Forbidden, they think it's Sabbath's weakest, but I don't think it's terrible, I don't even think it's bad, it's not quite as good as the others, um, but Tony O. Martin is still an amazing singer, and like I said, he's very underrated, I wish people would give him more of a chance, I think people just weren't ready for yet another uh, Black Sabbath vocalist, um, you know, he's definitely overshadowed by Ozzy and Dio, and hell, there's a lot of people who don't even give anything other than the Ozzy era a fair chance, so, you know, of course they're really gonna miss out on the Tony Martin years, which I think are, is a very, very awesome, um, part of the band's history. So yeah, Tony Martin, my eighth favorite uh, metal vocalist. He's amazing. He's got those powerful pipes. He could sing the Ozzy songs. He could sing the Dio songs live, and he sounded amazing on all of it. Um, he even played the harmonica when they played The Wizard, which was from you know, the first album with Ozzy. So yeah, he could, he could just do it all. The man was just way too talented for his own good, and I really wish he would do would have done a little more with the band, and I really wish he was... Uh, He's done a few other things since then, but I wish he was, like, a little more well-known and, like, well-respected, respect for sure. He really deserves more uh, notoriety. All right, so uh, number seven is going to be Ian Gillen from Deep Purple. I do consider Deep Purple a, uh, a traditional um, heavy metal band in, like, the vein of, you know, Judas Priest and Black Sabbath, of course. And uh, probably my favorite song, uh, my favorite album he sang on with Deep Purple is In Rock. There's a close one between this and Machine Head and... Uh, Fireball. This is the first album with him, their, their fourth album, the Mark II lineup. I definitely think the Ian Gillen era, the Mark II lineup and so on, was uh, was definitely considered, was definitely a traditional heavy metal band. Um, yeah, he, had, he could hit those high notes, especially like in the song Child in Time. Um, yeah, lots of great songs. Yeah, Speed King, Bloodsucker, Into the Fire. Um, yeah, it's awesome. And of course, I, I talked about this album a little bit in my, my guitarist list, so I mentioned Richie Blackmore. So yeah, a few of these albums are going to overlap a little bit. Um, I actually forgot to grab Born Again by Black Sabbath. I have the CD of that, too, because Ian Gillen did sing on a, a Sabbath, on one Sabbath album, Born Again, and it's actually pretty good, too. Um, you know, not my favorite Sabbath record for, by any means, and certainly not my favorite Ian Gillen vocal performance. That would go to, you know, Deep Purple, you know, like this one. But, uh, but Born Again was pretty good, too, and it's definitely had its, uh, had its place in the history of Sabbath. Um, yeah, I probably should have grabbed that, but, um... But oh well. Either way, uh, Ian Gillen's a great vocalist, um, and uh, he's my number seven choice for good reason. From Deep Purple. All right, number six. Um, I already mentioned him when I talked about Tim Owens. Uh, Matt Barlow from Iced Earth. And my favorite album with him was probably Something Wicked This Way Comes. All kinds of great tracks like yeah, Burning Times, Melancholy, Disciples of the Lie. Yeah, that's a good song. Uh, <laughs> Reaping Stone, which I think is like, one of the best uh, metal songs I've ever heard. They're very, they're kind of power metal-esque and very, uh, like, just very musically intricate, very melodic, and just very powerful uh, stuff. Really haunting and very moving. Um, they're really a really underrated band. You don't hear about Iced Earth too much amongst, you know, uh, most metal fans. But uh, I think they definitely have their place. And I think this is a really good album. Most people will probably say... Um, Burnt Offerings is their favorite with Matt, but I think he, I think he shined a little more on this one. That was a great album, too. Uh, they've had uh, multiple vocalists. Um, yeah, they had uh, Gene Adam on their first album, the self-titled, then John Greeley and Night of the Storm Rider. Then they got Matt Barlow starting Burnt Offerings on, and this, you know, like I said, this is my favorite album. Then Tim Owens, like I already talked about, um, replaced him for two albums, uh, Glorious Burden and uh, Framing Our Again, that we already talked about. Then Matt Barlow came back <laughs> for Crucible of Man, um, which was Something Wicked Part 2, and then, um, then he was replaced by Stu Block, who, uh, I think he just left the band recently, too. So they've gone through so many vocalists. It's like a revolving door lineup. They changed the singers like I changed my clothes, so. Um, but I think Matt Barlow is definitely my favorite Iced Earth singer, with Tim Owens at a very close second, because he's amazing as well. Yeah, Matt Barlow can hit those high notes. Um, yeah, just a very beautiful voice, very powerful voice. Um, just, just awesome in every way. All right, uh, number five, you knew this was coming, uh, King Diamond, who was in Merciful Fate, my favorite album, um, by them being Don't Break the Oath, and of course the eponymous King Diamond, my favorite album being Abigail. I talk about both these albums in my top ten 
guitar slayers when I talked about Hank Sherman and Michael Dinner, who in Merciful Fate, and uh, Andy LaRock from uh, King Diamond. And yeah, these are my favorite uh, albums that uh, he sang on. Yeah, um, King Diamond has those, those haunting, uh, ghastly vocals, which are perfect for like the horror movie type uh, imagery that he uh, sings about in his songs. He's a great st songwriter, great uh, storyteller. The man needs to direct a horror movie, or at least write one. Uh, that'd be great, because yeah, some of these albums are just very akin to a horror movie. It's some of the scariest, uh, most just uh, interesting um, stories I've ever heard. And uh, yeah, he, he do this high falsettos, uh, like it's you know, like it's nobody's business. It's just it's just so heavy and just so awesome. It just fits uh, the music of Merciful Fate and uh, and uh, the self titled band just perfectly. A long live the king of Ozzy's the Prince of Darkness. Uh, king Diamond is the king. He's one of my idols. I would love to meet him someday. And I really wish the man would would uh, write an autobiography because I'd love to read it because I'm just thoroughly intrigued by this uh, this awesome man. He's just utterly fascinating to me. Just yeah, one of my all time heroes. Long live the king, King Diamond from Merciful Fate and uh, the self titled uh, the the band of the same name. My number five favorite metal vocalist ever, and one of my favorite metal musicians in general. All right, so number four is going to be, of course, none other than Jeff Tate from Queensryche. And uh, probably, it's, it's a tough one. I think my favorite thing they've ever done was actually the, uh, the self-titled EP, which came out before any of their studio albums. But as for my favorite full-length studio release, release, it's a tough one between their first, like, four or five. But I think for now, at least, I'll go with Operation Mindcrime. This has a lot of my favorite... Uh, uh, Jeff Tate vocal um, performances, yeah, um, yeah, he could hit those high notes akin to Halford and Dickinson. He could just tear it up. He was just insane. That he's got some of the best vocal acrobatics this side of Freddie Mercury. Um, just a great, great singer, and it really wasn't the same after uh, after he left. Um, you know, Chris DeGarmo left before that. And I think they kind of the band kind of went downhill. Then Jeff Tate. Uh, left too but I did see them uh, earlier this year they opened for Judas Priest and they ripped it up unfortunately like I said Tate and DeGarmo weren't there but Todd Latour was great in his own right he could really sing like Jeff Tate, Tate did in his prime I would have loved to have seen him with Jeff Tate though you know just because he was on all my favorite albums and you know he was an amazing singer obviously um but what can you do um we'll still have these albums to look back upon and uh yeah just great stuff Jeff Tate was an amazing vocalist um just very very talented yeah, uh, yeah, Jeff Tate my, from Queensryche, my fourth favorite uh, singer, and I really wish that uh, I could have seen them live when they had him. All right, number number three is of course going to be Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden, Up the Irons. Um, yeah, he's, I mean, what can I say about him that hasn't already been said a thousand times? He hits those high notes. Um, he's the air raid siren. He has that awesomely uh, apparatic voice. And when you think of a band called Iron Maiden, those are the type of vocals I picture. As much as I love Paul Diano, had kind of a more raw, punk-oriented, uh, kind of deeper, almost like blues-tinged voice, um, I definitely prefer Dickinson, who is, you know, who is the superior vocalist who can just hit those high notes like it's, like, 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 uh, like it's nothing. And he just makes it look easy. Yeah, he's just... His voice is just very, very uh, powerful and just very commanding and um, just really, really moves me. And my favorite uh, album that Maiden did with, with Bruce Dickinson that I, uh, I already talked about in my guitarist video is Power Slave, their fifth album with the Egyptian theme. So many great songs. Ace is High, Two Minutes to Midnight, Flash of the Blade, um, Back in the Village. My favorite Maiden song ever, uh, which is just called Power Slave, the title track. And, of course, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Um... Yeah, this, this features some of Bruce Dickinson's best vocal work by far. It's just amazing, great album, just a flawless entry in their discography, and uh, Bruce Dickinson's awesomely powerful pipes are, are a huge reason why. And he also had a really successful solo career. Uh, my favorite album from the Bruce Dickinson band probably being Accident at Birth, which is also the only album I own from his solo output, but it's really good, too. I highly recommend you check it out. Yeah, some really good songs here. Yeah, Accident at Birth. So yeah, Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden, my third favorite vocalist, who makes up what I consider the holy trinity of metal, along with the uh, my number one and number two choice. So of course, number two is going to be none other than Ronnie James Dio. <laughs> oh yeah, the master himself. Wow, for such a for such a small person, boy, could he belt it out! Such a 
powerful, uh, commanding voice uh, came from this individual. Uh, he was one of my all-time heroes, one of my all-time idols. I would love to have met him. I did get his autograph right here, luckily. Uh, but yeah, it would have been really awesome to have met him. I, I really envy those uh, that, those of you that were able to, because yeah, he was just one of my all, he was one of my all time heroes. He's just the metal master. Um, he's insane. He's been he's been a lot of great bands, uh, most notably Rainbow, uh, Black Sabbath, of course, and uh, and uh, Dio. And uh, my favorite song, my favorite album by Rainbow, which uh, Dio really shined on, is uh, Rising. I already talked about this in my top ten guitarist video when we talked about Richie Blackmore. Um, yeah, Rainbow Rising is excellent. Uh, it's a very short album. There's only six tracks, but some of the songs are very, very long, so it makes up for it. Um, yeah, Starstruck and Stargazer and uh, uh, Run With The Wolf and Do You Close Your Eyes are some of my favorite tracks. Yeah, this album is just amazing. Uh, Ronnie James Dio and Richie Blackmore were just an unstoppable pair. Uh, they made for a great team of musicians and songwriters, and this album is a testament to that. Yeah, Rising, my favorite Rainbow album. When it comes to Sabbath... Um, it's a very close one. It's almost a tie between uh, the first two albums they did with the band, uh, Heaven and Hell and Mob Rules. But I think for now, at least, I am going to go with Heaven and Hell, the first album he did with the band, uh, by a hair. Um, though I will say Voodoo, which was on the next album, Mob Rules, is my favorite song from the Dio Sabbath. So there's that. But I do think Heaven and Hell might possibly have a... a um, uh, uh, a bigger amount of amazing songs. So it's very, very close. Like I said, it's almost a tie, but I gotta pick one or the other. And for now, I think by a hair, I'm going with Heaven and Hell. Um, yeah, great album. And, uh, you know, getting Dio was a great idea. And uh, his his powerful, uh, godlike voice was perfect for Sabbath sound. And uh, Heaven and Hell is a great, great album. One of my all-time favorites. And when it comes to his uh, self-titled band, Dio, I think the first one he did, Holy Diver, is probably still the best. It also features the drumming uh, talents from from uh, of uh, Vinny Apice, who was also in, uh, in the Mob Rules by Sabbath. Uh, he left with Dio to form, uh, to form this band, Dio. And uh, Holy Diver is a great, great album. Some of Dio's best work, for sure. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just awesome. So, yeah. Got to... Pay tribute to the master himself, Ronnie James Dio, my second favorite metal vocalist of all time, by far. All right, before we get to the number one spot, uh, here are a few honorable mentions. Um, Glenn Hughes, who was, of course, uh, played bass and did uh, co-lead vocals with David Coverdale in Deep Purple. Uh, and he also sang for Sabbath briefly for one album, the Seventh Star album, which is supposed to be a Tony Iommi solo record, but they put the Sabbath name on it. And he also sang for to Tony Iommi's solo band, Iommi, uh, for a couple albums. Um, and he's done a lot of, he's done a lot of st other stuff. He's also in uh, Black Country Communion. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he was, yeah, but my, my favorite things he's done are, are Deep Purple and Sabbath. And Glenn Hughes is a great, great singer, a really good bass player, too. Um, he has an awesome voice. Um, yeah, Glenn Hughes, he's great. Uh, also, uh, Michael Kisk, uh, Kisk, whatever, uh, from Halloween. Uh, Andy Darris, also from Halloween. Uh, Bill Byford from Saxon. Uh, Chuck Billy from Testament. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's my second favorite thrash metal vocalist, uh, next to Joey Belladonna from Anthrax, and, uh, he can just do anything, and he can hit the high notes, he can do the, the, uh, the higher register, he can do, like, deep demonic, almost death metal growls, he just has a very wide range, and, uh, I saw them in concert, uh, a few years ago, and it was just amazing, yeah, Testament's a great band, and Chuck Billy is a huge reason why, um, also Alex Skolnick, <laughs> who I talked about in my top ten guitarists' videos, so see that for more info. Um, also, uh, David Wayne from Metal Church, uh, rest in peace. Paul Diano, who was on Iron Maiden's first two albums, he's really, really good too. I, I love Paul's voice. Uh, Dave Tatum, who's very underrated from, uh, he was on Angel Witch's second and, uh, third albums. Uh, Dave Tatum was a really cool, uh, singer, he had a really, really deep, uh, almost baritone voice, which is really cool. Uh, John Greeley, uh, from Iced Earth, who was only in one album, Night of the Storm Rider, I already talked about, he had a really cool voice. Uh, and uh, Todd Latour, who's Creamsreich's uh, current vocalist, who I already mentioned, uh, is kind of the closest thing we'll ever get to you know hearing somebody sound like uh, Jeff Tate in his prime. Todd L Latour tore it up when I saw them live, and he's a really, really good vocalist and a great replacement, although um, I'll always prefer Jeff Tate, of course, when it comes to Creamsreich. And all right, so I um, also should mention uh, Lane Staley from Allison Chains and uh, Peter Steele from Typo Negative. They're great as well. Um, all right, so... When it comes to my number one choice, my favorite metal singer of all time is, of course, Fred Durst from Limp Bizkit. What's my favorite album he did, you ask? Well, all of them, of course. Duh. Everything he touches is pure gold. No. No. 
No, of course it is Rob Halford from Jews Priest. Like I've already mentioned a thousand times, my favorite Priest album that he sang on is Sad Wings of Destiny. Their second album and still their best in my opinion. Awesome album. I uh, love Priest. I already talked about this album ad nauseum, but it does contain my favorite uh, Priest song, Dreamer, Deceiver, and Deceiver, which is the following track. Um, awesome songs. And of course there's The Ripper, Victim of Changes. Um, fantastic, phenomenal album. And Halford's awesome high notes are a huge reason why he could just do anything with his voice such a wide range uh he's awesome he also had his uh he's also had several other projects like fight and two and uh lots of guest appearances and he also has his uh solo um band uh halford and this is their first album resurrection really good uh this is a really good example of why he's such an amazing singer too and uh, they're the sixth track the one you love to hate actually features a guest performance by bruce dickinson from iron maiden and it's one of the best vocal duets i've ever heard yeah halford and dickinson and singing together that's something that needs to happen more often the amount of metal uh is just breathtaking yeah love rob halford he's the metal god um he'll always be my favorite vocalist uh, he's just amazing um hell yeah uh, i saw priest uh, earlier this year and it was sick rob halford can still sing the man's like uh almost 70 or, or maybe maybe 70 and uh, he can he just still um still belts it out he's still a phenomenal vocalist um, all right, guys, well, be sure to let me know what your favorite uh, metal vocalists are in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching the Horror and Metal channel. I'm Hellhound. Until next time, later.